There's four games to go because if we have to watch that four more times, I don't know if we can make it through. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the PHNX Coyotes post game show. And if you're here, truly thank you. Like, just thank you, I guess. Don't forget to hit that Seriously. like button, <laughs> subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, leave us a five star review. I'm Lee here with Craig. We have Danielle behind the Mac. We have Raz waiting in the wings in case Craig walks off set dramatically. It's probably going to happen. Danielle yeah. behind the Mac. Um, Coyote shut out 5 nothing by the Seattle Kraken. Largest margin of defeat this season for this team. Second time they've been shut out this season. Your guys' thoughts. Craig, I'm going to go to you first because I know your, your answer is I don't really have any, right? You know, people ask me why I haven't been traveling with the Coyotes the second half of the season. Well, exhibit A. There it is. That's what I have to say. Petey? Yeah, this is frustrating. The team has five games left. The season is over. Like, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, it doesn't. And so it's hard to, to sit here and, and be critical it's hard to sit here and break this one down i mean i, I don't know does it matter and, and i don't no. want that to sound just like does it matter there were points in this game that there were some the, the coyotes had opportunities they they were around the kraken net especially in the second period i thought they were mm -hmm. good they, and then there were other times when i thought the kraken looked like the kraken from the playoffs i thought they were on top of the coyotes didn't allow them to move but then it always comes back to the same problem that this team continues to have is the way they defend and, and i i think it goes down to their goaltending who I, I don't think Corral was sharp tonight. I, I don't think he, he was at his best or near his best. And I, I think there were way too many state mistakes by their top defensive pair. And you look at Mosier and Dursey and it's, Man, it, it was it was it was a frustrating night to watch those two guys play in their defensive zone. Offensively, there were some bright spots. I thought, you know, who I really liked tonight was um, Dylan Gunther. I thought he showed some speed and some pace and had some opportunities in the net. So I thought he looked good. Um, Josh Doan had glimpses where he was around the net, but overall, uh, it, it, they got beat five nothing. Yeah. What do you say? And they say? play tomorrow, and they play four more times. Yeah, they got to cross the border, go through customs, play the yeah. Canucks tomorrow. Yeah, that'll. That'll go well. Um, yeah, Vimelka gave up two just god-awful goals tonight. Let's just say it. The first goal, I have no idea how it found its way into the net. And then the last goal, which was a wrist shot from the blue line. I, I'm somehow. still waiting to see. I was wondering <laughs> if, if the Malt Magician got involved in that one because I thought it went through him. And I think he thought it went through him too because he just <laughs> yeah, kept looking man, down. Literally, kept looking yeah. down like, you're not going to find it there, buddy. It's behind you. Like, what, I don't know what you're looking here for. Look in there. Yeah, it, it, it was not his best effort. But again... I, I mean, I sit here, it's hard to, like, I, I don't know, if, this is going to sound horrific, and I'm really sorry for the people that have dialed in, I don't know if I care, and, and I know that sounds terrible, but I, I, I sat and watched other games today, earlier in the day, where teams are competing for a playoff spot, and you're going, right. oh my god, I, it was unreal, like, I watched that Washington to Detroit, Detroit game, and it was insane, teams fighting for a playoff spot, neither of these teams are, and it, they look like it. Do you know if you care? Oh, do I? About the Coyotes games. I do not. I do not either. So I know that I don't care. <laughs> and Leah knows that she doesn't care. Well. Danielle, do you care? Da I think Danielle does. Oh, I'm dying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dan Danielle's in love with hockey. So yeah. Danielle is like so upset that the season's coming to an end. Raz, oh. Raz nod yes or no. Do you care about Raz cares. Raz is dialed in too. Raz so. is excited because the Coyotes Clearly we have the wrong people on the show tomorrow. tonight. Um, yeah, we're no. just frustrated. And we're just we're frustrated. We, we 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 sat here and talked about this team, and in January being in a playoff spot, and fourteen losses later, they're not. And it's you know they can skate with teams like this. We saw it. We saw some skate with teams, better teams. Vegas, they come out with that huge comeback win. San Jose, eh, eh. It was a no hitter, eh. And this one to me is just they just got beat in their own end from the blue line and they don't care. And in the offensive zone, they were they were lights out. There's so many players that are playing minus hockey right now. And I know all of them plus minus stat. We've 
at this point again hk like you've got to defend at some point and, and just didn't see it sitting in the penalty box i i don't know well, let's take a look at the numbers in this one presented by Desert Financial Credit Union, Arizona's number one credit union. Named by four of shots on goal, the Coyotes outshot the crack in 39 to 25. And just to give you a breakdown, um, period by period, the Coyotes outshot the crack in 9-7 in the first, outshot the crack in 18-9 in the second, and then outshot them 12-9. In the third, so not for a lack of shots on goal in this one. Power play, obviously, Coyote's 0 for 1. Kraken 1 for 3. Max Zuber in his first NHL game takes the penalty, and it results in a power play goal for the Kraken. Um, and shot attempts 72 for the Coyotes, 51 for the Kraken. So You know what the high danger chances were? And uh, again, prefacing all that, we know that that's just location. It doesn't mean sure. tips. 23 to 5 in favor of the Coyotes. Coyotes high danger yeah. chances wow. in this game. Yeah. So they did it, have a lot of opportunities. For a lack of chance. <laughs> five, high de- five high danger chances for the Kraken. And, and they got how many five goals? goals? Five goals. Well, you yeah, look at the uh, shot locations and some, some of those goals. Some were not high danger goals. Yes. Yes. You exactly. think? You think that fifth one? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't have a chance on some of those. That seam pass from Mosier loses his stick. He yeah. There were a couple of great shots. Yeah. But, some are great and some are not. Yeah. And on that, we, we, Raz pointed this out too. Like on, on, on the, with the play where Mosier. Lost his stick. Vilmoka had no idea the guy was there, though. That was the problem. Like he, he yeah. didn't even come close to going post to post on that on that backdoor play. So he didn't have a good read there either. Yeah, and I see a lot of comments in the chat about Bugstead being out. But you think of where this team was in January? It's not only Bugstead, and and I don't disagree. I think he's a good two hundred foot two way player that this team really needs. But you talk about Barrett Hayton missing again half of the season again. And yeah. and Travis Boyd, but say what you will, Travis Boyd had moments in in the last two seasons where he's playing higher up in the lineup, and you're like, those are three centermen. Yep. And, and this team is already lacking in in center depth, and then you take three centermen out of their lineup, and you said, but Buke says day to day. I he's not day to day. No, like Andre said he's a little more than day to day. So I, he, I mean, he's back here. He's in Arizona. Yeah, he's, so, so he's not, it's not playing like tomorrow. Fly him across the border. Right? If yeah. he plays, he'll play in the last game against. If he plays, he plays last game. Guess. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If he plays, and and then you're sure you're looking going into the Vancouver Canucks, who are buzzing again. I, I, I just I don't know where this team goes. The Ingram and Net tomorrow. Maybe he has a stellar performance, but the team's going to be tired. They're going to get in late. And, and as Leah mentioned, they got to cus- cross customs. Um, no, it's four. There's four to go. And, and you know who else is counting this down is all the staff. I mean, I, I they're feeling the same way on this flight right now, sitting down. They're going, good God, we have four games left. Let's get through this mess. Yeah. Um, Clayton Keller's point streak comes to an end tonight at the second longest of, career, of his career, 11 games. It was the second highest active point streak in the NHL tonight, right behind Austin Matthews. So that comes to an end, unfortunately, for him. And, yeah, we've talked a, a lot about Karel Vimelka already, but just – 20 saves on 25 shots for an 800 save percentage. It's just not going to get you a win too that I'm sure he would love to have back. And, you know, credit to Grubauer on the other side, because like you mentioned with the high danger, mm-hmm. um, you know, he, he played really well tonight as well. And on these nights that the Coyotes get shut out, it's really hard to come up with who has that dog in him. <laughs> um, there was a lot of chatter in our discord about giving it to Kerfoot who, Got slammed into the boards, was in a lot of pain on the bench, comes back out for his next shift, gets hit in the face. Like, poor guy was just taking a beating. Um, so there you go, Kerfoot. We'll give you some acknowledgement. But it, luckily for us, there were some things that presented themselves to be shoe-ins for Desert for Dog. Milestones, yeah. So first of all, we want to acknowledge that Michael Carconi played in his 100th career game tonight, which is a huge accomplishment for a player who went undrafted. Um, Tell the story on yeah. him tomorrow. Go phnx.com. Craig will have a story. So check that out. So we can save all of the flowers for him in that. But we wanted to acknowledge another guy. And I think he was our most recent desert dog, but he gets it again. Lawson Kraus, because this was his 500th NHL game. And that is a quite an accomplishment to reach the 500 game mark in the National Hockey League. So Lawson Kraus, you have that desert dog in you and congratulations. Yeah. Did you see the tweet that Claire put out tonight yes. with some of the childhood photos of, of Lawson when he was playing. Yeah, let's take that, a look. That was priceless. Uh, I always love this stuff. <laughs> yeah, Claire Krause, his wife, put this out. This little guy plays his 500th NHL game tonight, all as a coyote. Congratulations. Law- at Lawson Krause, we're all so proud of you and your never-ending list of achievement, halfway to a 1,000. Um, really great little kid photos of him, so check <laughs> it out um, on her Twitter account, at Claire Stewart. Great stuff. Uh, 
And ironically, at, right when you read that, did you, um, what number does he wear? 67. Did you see how many fo- people were watching this show the moment you read that tweet? Wow. wow. Creepy. 67. Now somebody else has joined, so they should turn away for a moment. <laughs> so it could continue to be 67. But it was 67 at that time, and now it is 68. Um, yeah, good, congr- he had on a couple a couple of looks tonight. He, I mean, did. he was He was okay. I thought, again, offensively, I think there were a lot of guys that looked good. And you talk about the shot attempts and the way this team was a- able to create offense against Grubauer. They had some really good looks offensively, and Kraus was right in there. I thought his line looked good tonight. Um, I already talked about Gunther buzzing around. Um, so, yeah, I, I, congratulations for that Desert Dog. I was expecting Craig to give an honorary to the to the dog pig, but butter, <laughs> butter pig. pig dog. Yeah. I probably should have. He has that literal desert dog in him. He literally is. Yeah, for sure. And by the way, um, Shelby had mentioned Keller standing up for cools. That was another moment in the first period. You know, Logan Cooley got kind of leveled. Keller went after him and, you know, they both got penalties for it. But good to see guys standing up for their teammates, even in tough games like this one tonight. So that's something else you love to see. But what I love to see is that. We're going to all be in Tucson on Saturday, April 20th. That's something we can all look forward to at the tail end of this season here. The Roadrunner season finale. We're doing a meetup at Illegal Pete's Saturday, April 20th. That's Illegal Pete's in Tucson, 5 p.m. ahead of the 7 p.m. Roadrunner season finale. It's going to be a big game for the runners then. Probably is. Yeah, they're in a huge stretch here. Really important stuff. Um, And if you click the link on our events tab, go phnx.com slash events. There's a link to buy Roadrunners tickets for four. 40% off. Thanks to our friends at the Roadrunner. So make sure you take advantage of that. And again, um, just one of the many great things we get to do here, meet up. um, And we want you to become a diehard as well. So you can get your free shirt or hat at sign up. You can get 20% off merch. You can get 20% off on events, access to diehard only content and access to our discord as well. So many great perks to becoming a diehard. So make sure you you join today, join the family, go phnx.com slash diehard. Um, (laughs) So we're sitting there toward the end of the game and, you know, when we see Grubauer doing well, we just pointed out the coyote shots on goal and Raz goes, well, the, uh, the more than would have hit in this game for goalie (laughs) saves. And I said, gosh, darn it. You're right. Except we wouldn't have gotten any points because the kids got shut out, but still it's the principle. And that's what's so fun about using prize picks because there's always skin in the game, even in a game like this, a five, nothing horrible loss. You could have had skin in the game. If you had any of the coyotes less than I'm sure it would have gone well in your favor. And I actually had some prize picks things in action at the national championship last night. I was I there figured. in person and I got to say, it I, like I'm Stephen not a, Locke must have had some team, yeah. right? Like oh, a, there were four between them. us. <laughs> and I'm not like I'm not a Purdue fan or a UConn fan. So it, it was so fun cheering for individual players. Just one of the many, many fun things that you can do with prize picks, not to mention how great the app is. And also, if you're looking for a little bit of a challenge that has the little devil face next to it, and if it's maybe a little bit of an easier pick, it has the little green guy. So there's a little tip for you. All you have to do is go to prizepicks.com slash phnx and use code phnx for a first deposit match up to $100. They're literally matching you up to $100. So make sure you take advantage of that. That's prizepicks.com slash phnx and use code phnx. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Yeah, and then go over to what? <laughs> I'm reading other stuff, Leah. That was supposed to go longer. Where's the disclaimer? All that other stuff. For more than 84 years, Desert Financial has been Arizona's largest, most trusted local credit union. The Desert Financial team are financial experts who offer financial solutions tailored to helping real people like us. Look to Desert Financial for checking and savings accounts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, investment options, and even for guys as old as Craig, retirement. And so much more. When you open a free checking account online, get $200 in bonuses and get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200. All right. Well, we talked about, um, you know, the injuries in this team. Bukestad out yeah. of the lineup. Um, unfortunately, Travis Dermott out for the remainder of the season, which, you know, you hate to see that for a guy who kind of had, I think, a tougher year than probably any of us wanted for him in terms of injury problems. But on the flip side, you get the opportunity to see a guy get called up. And in our case, we got to see a guy make his NHL debut. One of the best names ever to say, Maximilian Zuba, Zuba. Uh, made his NHL debut. Sorry, Major debut. Nelson, you were you were pronouncing it wrong in the uh, Discord tonight. It's 
I didn't, I didn't feel the end of it the right way. It should be <laughs> Zuba. Okay. Oh, man. So he takes his rookie lap tonight. He's had a really good season down in Tucson. Six goals, 11 assists, 18 points, and a plus 11. We're going to talk about plus minus. Does plus minus matter? In 67 okay. games in Tucson. Um, you know, obviously it took a penalty tonight. But, PD, what did you see from Zuber in his first NHL game? Well, I think early, honestly, first of all, he's a big bodied guy. He's a really big guy. And I will say this, I think in the first period, I think he, he the, the speed got to him. And I think that's how he drew the penalty. I think the pace was just a little bit more than he's accustomed to in the American League, which is no surprise when you're defending, especially a defenseman of his size. I thought he, he settled into the game better. I thought he moved the puck quicker as the game went on. And I, I think he got in less trouble as the game moved on. So I really thought the first period, his trouble period, but then he gets a minus late in the, in the game, and it happens on that, that play where Moser loses the stick. And I'll tell you what happens to him. I felt bad for him. You could see it coming. It's one of those ones, Lee, if I would have been sitting by you in the more furniture chairs, I was I would tell you they're going to get scored on. Because when Moser comes out of the box, it's Zuber and Brown are defending the penalty kill. And now Moser comes out as a defenseman. Now they got three defensemen. And, and nobody knows where to go. And there, there, there was a point where, where Zuber looks to his right and he's standing literally right next to Moser and he goes, oh, I shouldn't be here. And so he ran to the corner and that's where ultimately the goal gets scored in, with Moser without a stick. But uh, so he gets the minus, but honestly, I don't think he made a bad play on that. I think there was more confusion with, with Moser. Um, he was okay. He was okay. I, I he didn't get an opportunity to play the physicality and the physical game that I think that that, that he can really be, be a part of and gets him engaged in the game. But he was he was okay. Okay, but there is a lot of hype about him. There is. The I, I think he's a guy that's probably risen a little faster than expected. Um, you know, w- with where he was selected in the draft, you, they weren't necessarily expecting him to be over here and pushing for a spot, a, a significant spot in Tucson. Now, I don't think Max Zuber is a guy who's going to push for an NHL roster spot, at least based on the conversations I've had with their development staff. They really feel like he needs another at least full season in the AHL. But one of the uh, strengths of this kid's game and, and something that they saw very early when they were scouting him when they chose to draft him is his brain. I believe we have a quote here, a pull quote from a prospect report that I did yeah. at the beginning of the season on him when they were they were deciding what to do with him and he was impressing so many people. So if we can throw that up, Danielle. Yes, the, uh, we'll take a look at this quote. And this comes from Coyote's development coach, Curtis Foster, who said, what separates him from his peers is his ability to read the game. His ability to think the game is just on another level. When you get a guy like him in the sixth round, you temper expectations. But then he exceeds them and then he exceeds them again and again. You keep waiting for that plateau and it's just not happening. Love to hear that about a sixth round pick. A big, another big defenseman who can move. He's he's mobile. He's smart. He uh, has has good positioning defensively. Obviously, there's a, a huge learning curve for defensemen in the in the National Hockey League. The pace just keeps getting faster every every year. So it it's going to take some time for him. But they're really happy with what they've seen from him so far. Hopefully, he gets a chance to go back down there at some point. I know we're going to talk about Yan Yanik as well. But we keep talking about Tucson being in this push for the playoffs, PD, and the Coyotes just keep taking players away from that roster as they're in this playoff push. I mean, they got a they got a huge sweep in San Diego. I don't know how they're doing it at this point, but now you take two more very important players out of their lineup because um, you got to fill slots, and the slots that you're going to have to fill probably for the rest of the season. Yeah, it's unfortunate, and it's unfortunate that the injury bug is at the Arizona Coyotes at this time of the season when it's when it's really important for the Tucson Roadrunners. It did it last season too. I mean, it's something they've been accustomed to down in Tucson, and and and, and I think Max Zuber is a guy that that has been really Im- impressive down there, and, and I think it. It's unfortunate he had to play his first game against the Seattle team that I thought finally got their legs back. That's a team that has struggled offensively, and and they just had their feet moving. They were they were hemmed the Coyotes in at the defensive zone at times without getting the shot totals that you see on the, the shots for and against. But they were a very quick team on the four check. I, I think he he just needs a couple of games to settle in, and I don't think he got a lot of help back there. I yeah. don't think his partners were. I mean, he played a lot with Josh Brown today, and that's that. That was tough. And and, and again, I thought Morgan and Jersey when they were on the issue, they they struggled. I don't think he had a lot of support in the defensive zone um, from his defense partner or from his forward. So I, I think there are are good days ahead for Zubra. I wouldn't. This is one game. It's one game, and he was good. He was just good. 
Well, another guy who stepped into the lineup to fill in for Nick Bugstad being out, Jan Yannick, his first NHL game since November 22nd. Down in Tucson this season, he's played 54 games, has 16 goals, 20 assists, 36 points, third on the team in points behind Josh Doan and Akuratu um, and down in Tucson. Jan Yannick was even tonight, yeah. you know, I guess – Better than being something dramatic, drastic, dramatic, 946 time on ice. Um, he's a guy that I feel like we've been talking about for a long time. Where does where does he fit? Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious what your take is on him, Petey, because I I think early, uh, earlier on in his tenure, there was a lot of excitement about what he was showing. He plays with that greedy style that Bill Armstrong really likes, but it Speaking of plateaus and the quote that we just had up, it, it just feels like Yan Yannick has plateaued. He's producing down there, but I don't know if he's doing anything where you say, oh, this is going to be an NHL regular. Right now, he looks to me like a guy that's shuttling back and forth. I, I don't think he's taken that next step in his development. No, he's got a guy that had a lot of confidence over the summer where he almost didn't end up playing this season because he was trying to, to improve his contract status. One bright spot he Who's had tonight, he was... <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. You know agents. I don't know it's agents. Alan Walsh. Oh, there you go. Oh, I've heard of them. Um, yeah. Yeah, you just, you just really, like I was going to start talking. And I just but anyway, the one bright spot with Yanni Chang, who he was the Coyotes' best um, face-off center iceman. He was six and three in the circle, which for Coyotes centerman, you know, anything above fifty for this team is outstanding because this team stinks <laughs> in the face-off circle. So that was a bright spot. Well, one thing I, I did miss from when you look at the stat line for Yanni Unique is his hits, and he had none. And, yeah. and here's the, here's what Craig said is about his intensity and that little edge that he brings. One of the problems he had a season ago is he went kept going over the line and he got the call up here to Arizona. He would sit in the penalty box. He'd get out of the penalty box, get another penalty because he didn't know how to walk that fine line. Today, I didn't feel that that rat, that guy that was causing disturbances on the ice, the guy that you noticed because, oh, my goodness, he's 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 crossing the line or he's being a little more physical or a little I don't know say dirty and i just didn't see that yawn unique again he was around the net he had he had one one opportunity that he was in tight around the net but i just didn't notice him like i had in the past when he's had opportunities to play up in the nhl yeah eric said will gunther go back uh that is the plan he's right? the plan. We'll go back for the playoffs I yeah don't, like, for the I don't, playoffs i don't yeah. think he's gonna go back anytime before that i mean well, they they, and, they do have what do they have two games after the Coyote season ends? Yes. So it's a possibility that all these guys will be there for those final, which two would games. be great for us on the April twentieth. It'd, it'd be amazing, and it would takeover. really help the runners as well. So we'll see what happens with Connor Geeky in the playoffs too. Yeah. Oh yeah, if they get knocked out, boy howdy. Yeah, boy howdy is absolutely right. Um, we are just so the chat knows we are not talking about anything besides. The hockey tonight. Nope. Just saying that yep. right now. So don't expect anything and just want to say that. Um, but speaking of the Roadrunners down in Tucson, we mentioned it, that we will be meeting at Illegal Pete's. That is where I first had Illegal Pete's as a U of A student. And I frequented Illegal Pete's a lot. So I am very familiar with the Tucson location. Um, a lot of you are, too. We've been there all together before. Got to say, the prickly pear margaritas are on point. Obviously, I always talk about the queso, the bowls, the tacos, the burritos, whatever it is. I can't wait to go back to Illegal Pete's. It feels like for me, it's been too long since I've had it and I cannot wait. And Illegal Pete's is here to bring you a win with their legendary sound check deal. You can bring in your ticket stub from any ticketed event and get a draft beer or house margarita for a penny. Illegal Pete's wants to celebrate with you, whether it's a pregame or postgame party, and they got you covered on all your game day needs. You must purchase an adult entree to redeem Illegal Pete's soundcheck deal. Illegal Pete's, your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. And then go play the Arizona Lottery's newest game ticket and promotion called the Arizona Adventure. And there's three ways to win. If you don't know this by now, I'll go through them really quick. You got to scratch the Arizona Adventure lottery tickets featuring three iconic Arizona landscapes. Then if you don't want to do that, log in at azadventure.com set up and just go to these 10 uh, geolocated destinations across the state of Arizona from Flagstaff to Yuma and everywhere in between, including Hole in the Rock and Papago Park, which we all went to. All you got to do is just say you're there and they go, yep, you're there. We'll enter you to, to win cash and prizes. And the third way to do is take your ticket, enter it online for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. The Arizona Lottery is not just about playing games and winning prizes. It's also about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Blatantly said, can we talk about Craig's glasses? 
What he's act what that he's wearing them? He's wearing them and not squinting at Petey. Yeah. Let me take them off. No. So I can squint. No, again. I don't. Is that you, Petey? Yeah, I, really I can't tell. I can't see shit either. My old ga- glasses saga. It's for another time. We'll talk about my glasses <laughs> saga. I think I've got it solved, but we'll, oh, we'll, we'll boy. talk about it later. Well, everybody put your glasses on because we're going to take a look at the upside down standings. All right. So let's take a look. Here we go. Look it's time. That. I like that. I like the I music. Really like this. <laughs> I That's the vibe we need tonight. That music. Well, the Coyotes find themselves back in fifth worst, which is just, good just news. Just call it fifth place, okay? Let's okay, just call we'll it call fifth it place. fifth place. We're going to go with that. That's where they are. Um, yep. The Senators, unfortunately, lost tonight, so it's still a thin margin there. Senators have 72 points. The Coyotes have 71, and that is now they have no more games in hand. They are all equal. Montreal, though, huge win tonight huge over win. the Flyers. Holy Nine moly. Three. Yeah. Wow. Bye bye flyers. They yeah, go bye bye. How'd that uh, benching of Sean Couturier work out? Yeah, they're down done. the stretch. Oof. I know it's two points out, but they're done. They're done. Sorry. Oy. Um, but that was a good win for the Coyotes in these standings because they are the f- in fifth place, in as, fifth place as we're calling it. Yeah, and they have um, to. Yeah, you, you look at it. Ottawa seventy two, Montreal seventy two, and Raz is. Ca- oh wait, they're not your Calgary Flames because you're a <laughs> Vancouver Canucks fan. Um, there's. There's three teams in range, so be careful here. Yeah, listen, be here we'll take as these, you go through like, Canada. We we'll five. We'll take four more five nothing shutouts, like just to secure that. Oh, wow, spot. can you imagine finish the season like that? I will not Oof. actually take that, but I will take four more losses. Um, so in the spirit of them being back in this place, and in the spirit of us being focused on the tank with four games to go, here we go. We're going to do a tankathon simulation. It's been a while well, since we've done this. It's been this. a minute. It really has. So let's take a look. We're going to pull it up right now. Danielle, you've had the magic touch this year. So let's see what we got. Mm, and the county stay, stay at five. I That'd don't like okay. Columbus That'd jumping okay. up to win the lottery. Yeah, Columbus has never won the damn lottery. Yes. So they, they deserve to. San I mean, has- they, they- Pick Rick Nash first overall, but they traded up to get him. Yeah, San I'm okay Jose, with this. I'm okay second. if they stay at five. Just don't drop. Yeah. Just don't drop yeah. like they do like half the time five is in the five. lottery. And Chicago five is five. dropped in that one. Yeah, so. let Chicago mm-hmm. drop. They deserve to drop. Yeah. Well, we talk about the standings, and I just, we're not going to get into it today in the playoff stuff, but boy, is this going to be interesting mm-hmm. as this goes over the next few days. I know the Western the Western Conference, there, there are no spots really to fight for. It's just positioning, and that positioning, again, <laughs> boy, howdy. Congratulations, Dallas Stars. You get to play the Vegas Golden Knights. Can you imagine that in the first round, Petey? Buddy, that's that's the, the Western the Conference win. final right there. Potentially, they not only do they, they win, they, they potentially... Well, I guess they're a little shy. They can't catch the Rangers, but but they're gonna win the West. <laughs> win the West, and you play the defending Stanley Cup champions. Oh, by the way, that bunch of guys coming off LTIR that just happened to get yep. healthy on that day. So suck that too. <laughs> oh, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be tough. These playoffs are gonna be tough, and the Coyotes unfortunately won't be the, in them again for another season. Sigh. Um, bees ask, what's the worst standing we can end with? So I think, pretty I think much where. Yeah. Yeah. yeah where like are. I don't think yeah. Columbus is winning many games there it's a seven point spread between columbus With and four Arizona. games left so yeah it's, yeah no it's not yeah. happening no nope. yeah it's columbus not. only has three left so yeah they only have three left. left they can't they yeah. literally can't catch the coyotes yeah, yeah. right it's it. so fifth fifth, is the, best. the answer is fifth yep yep fifth worst is uh, the best or the Nick, worst nick okay. saying my gut feeling is telling me the oats will get number two in the draft number two wow I'll take that okay nick we'll take get the best of the defensemen in this draft sure. yeah why not eric said six Come on, Eric. Let's have Come some on, positivity. Where's, yeah, where's the vibes, Eric? Uh, well, I mean, this is what happens most of the time. I mean, you're, yeah, you're right, Fair Eric. enough. That's being a Coyotes <laughs> fan. Uh, <laughs> you talked about all the teams in the hunt. The Coyotes are not. So let's see which teams they're playing in this final stretch. Oh, and it's a couple of important games for different reasons. So Vancouver, tomorrow night, 730 start. Boo. Yeah, yeah huge awesome. win for the Canucks, though, against Vegas. That that might have clinched the division for them. Good for them for coming back in that game. Then it's on to Edmonton in, on Friday, and then into Calgary on Sunday. And the reason I say this is a big one, only two points separate yeah, the Coyotes and the Flames, Flames right now. So that is actually going to happen. Flames just won, Flames just so won. Now it's four. Okay, that's, that's thank better. Thank you. This is 
Raz, thank you. For and that. then two games against the but Oilers. Still. We don't know if Connor McDavid is going to play or not because yeah. he's got an LBI, I believe. Uh, we'll see what what his status is. Um, I mean, to me, if you're Edmonton at this point with the way Vancouver came in, came back in that last game. I don't know. What are you worried about? Uh, Hundredth assist. That's what they're worried about. Yeah, maybe you play him one game, but rest Connor McDavid. Have him. Have him ready to go. I don't think. Yeah, L.A. and Vegas aren't going to catch him at this point. So you're locked into that second hole. Make sure that your best player, the best player in the world, is healthy and ready to go. Yeah, and again, when we talked, it's funny. Craig and I talked to to Rick talking in that audio only episode about who do you play and how you said you can't you can't look at it. you got to play every day you got to win win the game you're supposed to win you can't start looking on who you're going to play and yeah and 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 when you talk about that with Edmonton Oilers I, I think for me you could end up playing the LA Kings right now tomorrow you also could end up playing the Vegas Golden Knights very easily but you want to do it with a healthy Connor McDavid having said that if Connor McDavid sits out these two games for the Edmonton Oilers it doesn't mean that I think the Coyotes are, are, are a shoe in to get four points because I'm not <clears throat> they're, they're still the team that can score and they can score on the power play. Well, it should be interesting to see how things shake out here. Um, lots of implications on the playoff teams for the wild cards mm-hmm. and then implications at the bottom of the standings. It's kind of going to be come down to the wire, I think, for where the Coyotes end up in the standings. So we'll be following that along closely. We'll see, Shelby. I promise I will Vogue if they win. Shelby, the draft we are lottery. winning the draft lottery, and Craig and Petey are voguing. Listen, I would love for it to happen. I really would. So, we'll st- of all the years, oh. who knows? Who knows? Petey, um, you're only w- allowed to wear white and black. By the way, just yeah. letting you know, and we're gonna have dramatic lighting as well. Sure, and yeah. figure it out. Let's do it. Oh, I just, it might need to have, we might have to have a show, maybe the last game, or maybe if they don't win the lottery, we can like see if we can hit a super chat plateau and you guys will do it anyway. I don't know. Listen, I just, just, gonna- I just had like a, a five second clip of the two of us voguing run through Craig's my head. And now I'm terrified. I'm good with you sticking at five. Guys. <laughs> you're going to need to get another <laughs> hip replacement after. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Let's take a look at the punch card. I can't believe it's almost done. Just four games to go. I literally can't believe it. Oh my God. Um, Just insane. I can't believe we're already here. One week. One let's let's do it. Let's let's finish it. <laughs> LFG. <laughs> let's, let's, if you could right now, would, would you not do four days in a row and just get it done? I yep, would. I would. For sure yep. I would. They essentially just, are. It, it feels yep. like it. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Crazy. And do you guys have any final thoughts on this game? This might be the fastest post game show of all time. That was the goal. That was yeah, the goal. I, be the fastest post game show. Honestly, a couple of bright spots. Yay. I, I, I don't know. It's one one game <laughs> one game closer <laughs> to the end. I I, 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 know I hate to do that. I mean I, I watched it. There were some things I was hoping Keller would continue his streak to twelve. I was really rooting for that. Um but instead he ends up with a dash three. Um, him and Schmoltz minus three each again. Um, I, I that's it. I got nothing. Joel, I have already done the hot dog with ketchup thing. Yeah, you know, that was in, that, that was is, in season one of PHNS yes. Coyotes. You will never see that right again. Now. You will never I'm, see I'm that hungry. again. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Hot dog? You would eat a hot dog anyway. What are you talking about? No, I wouldn't. Yeah, I might right now. You never know. No, I would not eat a hot dog right now. Yeah, oh, right now. boy. We do have a super chat that I want to make sure we get to uh, from John, who said, said it before the game, but I was watching a show and I was going to watch the game, but decided on the show after 2 nothing. If there's anything good, though, Montreal won. John, good <laughs> choice on the show. John yeah. picked watching a show. <laughs> I appreciate the thing, John. that, John. The, show was, the, the game was two hours and 40 minutes. The, the show was only going to be like 35. So good choice, yeah, buddy. I was going to watch a game, but. <laughs> By the way, what a treat for us here in the Page and X studios. We had the Coyotes on one TV. We had the Phoenix Suns on the other TV. So I heard they just, were really good tonight, too. Just a joyful night overall here at PHNX Sports. They get Sports. upset. They get, yeah. they get upset because they're trying to make the playoffs. They were so doing they a watch-along. <laughs> no, at 18 to 2, they were doing a watch-along. <laughs> oh, buddy. Yeah. yeah that was been, uh, I mean, they, they at least they made it interesting. That didn't happen for the Coyotes. Did they make tonight. it interesting? They did. They got it as close yeah, as 7. Did. In the fourth oh, quarter, but boy, howdy! Is yeah. that playoff thing? Yeah, they got playoffs. Who yeah, they're, they're in the, the play. play. They're in the play in now. Oh, the right last now three are. games of the Ooh. season are on the road. So, well, Uh-oh. it looks like the Suns will be in a play in spot. Boy, wow. boy is all oh. I have to say. Can we talk? What do we got to do tomorrow? We, we have another year? game. Uh okay. we get. Well, yeah, we got a game. Yeah, we got it. Yep. No, we won't talk about that yet. We won't talk about that yet. Yeah, but no, just know that. So, that I know she there's a lot of people asking questions about a lot of things. Thursday show, 
Thursday show. Tune into Thursday show. Yeah. It'll be an interesting one for you. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna talk. To, we're gonna talk a lot, a lot we, about the off ice. What, what are we gonna talk about stuff. on on Thursday? I, I I think we have a topic, right? Don't we? I mean, yeah, we we definitely have a topic. We definitely have a topic. Yeah. So just what you you don't want to talk about it, Petey? Oh, I'm. You have it, Daniel? Do you have it? Beaver. Do you have it? <laughs> nope. <laughs> I didn't press just, Daniel at there all. Were a lot of, there were a lot of questions in the chat. out of the blue on that one. A lot okay, of questions. Okay, now we're ready. <laughs> what are we going to talk about on Thursday? That's right. Just silence. <laughs> just silence. <laughs> there it is. I mean, it, better. it did almost actually. <laughs> Danielle's watching a, a show too. Yeah, we're yeah. going to talk about the arena on Thursday. So yeah, Stay yeah. Tuned it's, for that. It's, it's, tomorrow's another game in Vancouver. This is one we'll we'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow night. What we're going to actually do, right? Yes. Mm. <laughs> we're going to tease it. <laughs> it's, it's the show everybody's been waiting for. So tune in. Tune oh in. boy! Oh boy! All right. Well, tomorrow well, it's uh, Raz's Vancouver Canucks instead. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think pretty much think Raz should just fill in for the entire show. I'm, it's fine with me. I might not come he in. Do all okay? Just Raz and Danielle. Yeah, Raz and Danielle for the entire show tomorrow. <laughs> Danielle's <laughs> into this hockey thing now, and I know Raz will be fired up because it's against Vancouver. So let him. Do. I'm. Yep. I'm completely uh, down. So good. All, all right. right. Well, one more thing we can all circle on the calendar this summer that I just want to remind everybody is. The Keeping It 100 Golf Classic. Yes, it's back. And I know a bunch of you were there last year and it was so much fun. May 10th at Dobson Ranch Golf Club. We are doing a scramble with a 7.30 a.m. shotgun start. And you can get your tickets right now. Go phnx.com slash events. Entry fee includes range balls prior to the round, 18 holes with a cart, games throughout the event, goodie bags, prizes for winning teams, lunch, drinks, and after round party at Dobson Ranch after the round. And I have to say... We were there last year. It was a blast. Craig was literally giving out cold cucumber scented towels. That's right. They were dipped in cucumber water. That is that is a true story. So we want to see you all out there. Um, diehards, you can use your discount to buy the tickets. Again, one of the many perks of being a diehard. Um, but again, that's May 10th at Dobson Ranch, 730 in the morning. Get your tickets now. It's going to be a blast and we're all going to be out there. So mm -hmm. we want to see you all there and, and just, you know. Something fun to circle on the calendar for the summer. How Last year was so much fun. It was just me and Craig rolling around in a golf cart for like two hours. Remind me when it is, Leah. May 10th. Golf. Well, I mean, not, don't remind me now. Oh. Like, remind <laughs> is it? Jesus Christ. You remind me when it gets closer because <laughs> I won't remember that. I got Jesus. you. I might have don't, a different scent this year. Donut, Should I try it, a different it, scent? Maybe lavender? Lavender. Interesting. Donut mm -hmm. We have lavender all over or our yard. So, ooh, well, Maybe some spearmint? We'll see. I'm, I'm going to think we'll, we'll do a poll when we get closer. That's which, a good idea, which actually. Which scent would you like the towels to be? Mm. There I you will. Go. I, I am going to put out a poll. All right. Well, we appreciate you all so much for watching. Please hit the like button on this video if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on audio, be sure to leave us a review on there. Hit the little five star button. It would really mean a lot to us. And sincerely, like everybody joining after a five nothing shutout on to the Tuesday. Seattle Kraken <laughs> on a Tuesday that the Suns and D-backs also played with four games to go when there's so much other BS going on. I really appreciate it. Sincerely, like from the bottom of my heart, I know we like make fun and say oh like we don't care but we do care about the people who watch so we we sincerely sincerely appreciate you so we look forward to seeing everybody Teacher. here tomorrow night Ooh, i like that interesting tomorrow night we hope it's a better game um and be sure to subscribe to the phnx sports youtube channel hit the notification bell so you never miss when we go live you can follow us on Twitter at Leah Merrill, at Craig S. Morgan, at SPD's Hockey, at Abraka Danielle. You can follow the show on Twitter at PHNX underscore Coyotes. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night, everybody, and we will see you all tomorrow. We all silly like the mayor.